such introduction by Dalibor. Uh, uh, we are taking things not so seriously, as Dalibor used to say. This is uh, maybe because of the city, which is uh, uh, not only our city, but uh, European city of Prague, uh, uh, located just uh, at the crossroads between beer culture, between wine culture, between vineyards, and between between breweries, uh, between Jewish culture and German culture, and you can find in Prague also French architecture and Italian architecture. So, uh, uh, we cannot be so doctrinaire uh, as uh, maybe some, uh, some other nations. And it, uh, it is expressed also not only in literature, uh, that uh, writers writing in different languages, Czech, uh, have uh, written so fantastic novels just in Prague, uh, but also in architecture. Uh, I spent, ah, sorry, ah, I have to, uh, to learn how to operate with this high-tech movement. Uh, each university has different high-tech movements, so it's uh, quite difficult. Uh, for me. I spent 16 years in this uh, building uh, in Prague as a head of the architecture collection of the National Museum of Technology. It was uh, quite an uh, interesting time, the better time as I spent at the university because it was very hard time between 73 to 91 and I could collect here uh, files and documents on Czech architecture. And uh, it's interesting that just uh, Miloš Forman, the famous Czech, uh, uh, Czech film director, has chosen just this place, the House of Disabled People, uh, for the first sequence of his film Amadeus. Salieri is, uh, uh, is uh, picked up uh, to this building and he's uh, passing this road where are uh, chained uh, patients and in one of these cells he starts his confession. So uh, uh, I was also one of the disabled people who, who has uh, prepared a little confession in different field of, uh, of activity in this uh, 18th year. So let me start this uh, confession now. Uh, at first, only few steps to show you the between 1880 to 1918. Uh, the Czech modern movement starts with uh, neo-Renaissance, with, uh, uh, with buildings by Josef Zitek, who was uh, architect of the Czech National Theater, and of this uh, building of the concert hall Rudolfinum uh, on the embankment of the river uh, uh, Vltava. Uh, he was professor of the German Technische Hochschule in Prague because at that time we had two universities and two uh, technical universities. And he was uh, uh, at the same time architect of the Czech National Theater. So for architects, the national problem uh, has not existed in 19th century. Most probably, he was. He started his career uh, building uh, the uh, country museum in Weimar in early 60s of 19th century. Then he won. He was 32 competition for the National Theater, and finally, and built it. And finally, he built also this fantastic concert hall, which uh, is expressing very clearly Semperian architectural ideas is clearly uh, shown function of the foyer, of the volume, of the concert hall, and in the back side then uh, the, uh, the uh, gallery. Next step was the national romanticism uh, movement uh, impressed by, by the English movement arts and crafts, uh, and as the architect of this house, Dusan Jurkovic used to uh, write by Macintosh, by Charles Boisey, and of course also by Finnish national romantic, romantic architects like uh, Gezelius, Lindegren, and Saarinen. His name was 
Dušan Jurkovič. He was not trained as an architect, only as he, he graduated at the high uh, technical school in Vienna and worked for some building entrepreneurs on the border between uh, Moravia and uh, Slovakia. And he built them for himself his own house where he mixed these uh, influences from the West and of uh, domestic folk architecture on the border between Slovakia and Moravia. He has opened his house with an exhibition of his own work, which was attended by young students of Brno High School, uh, like Kumposht, Fuchs, and others. Uh, the technical high school in Brno had, uh, in the old Austrian Empire, a uh, very high renomé because if you would read on the list of uh, students of that school, you would be really surprised because you would find their names like Adolf Loos, uh, Josef Hoffmann, uh, Brothers Gessner, Bohuslav Fuchs, and others. So the younger generation of architects like Fuchs, Kumpos, they attended this uh, private demonstration of Jurkovic, and it was the start of their own career uh, which uh, was developed in the uh, new Czechoslovak Republic in the 20s and 30s. But the real founder of Czech modern architecture was Jan Kotiera, pupil of Otto Wagner at the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, uh, a very close friend of Plecznik, but now he is somehow in shadow of Plecznik, but he played in first two decades of the century very prominent role not only in Czech Republic but in the whole Central European uh, architecture. Uh, he was awarded Rome Prize and spent six months in Rome and after that he exhibited his sketches in one uh, Prague gallery uh, when he was 27 years old, 1897. He was appointed professor of the School of Decorative Arts in Prague and he became immediately leader of Czech modern culture. Uh, uh, as an uh, architect, as uh, editor-in-chief of the journal Volné Směry, Three Directions, where he started to publish the work of Paul Ankar, of Victor Octa, of Sullivan, Wright, and of Koche, and the other modernists in the West. Uh, <coughs> he was also chairman of the Association of Artists, Manes, and he built in 1992 the Manes Association at the occasion of the first exhibition of uh, the French sculptor Auguste Rodin, Ebrot. It was the start of his career, and then he developed his own style very fast in direction to rational architecture through influence of the arts, arts and crafts movement, like in this villa for his friend um, Stanislav Sucharda in Prague. Sucharda is sculptor of these uh, sculptures at his uh, most important work, the Municipal Museum in Hradec Králové. Kotera traveled in 1905 to the Netherlands to, and to England. Uh, he came back and introduced brick architecture to Bohemia. And maybe in this building, which has quite free plan and a very interesting uh, uh, architecture, uh, executed first building inspired by the work of Frank Lloyd Wright even earlier as uh, the uh, publisher Wasmut in Berlin uh, published the famous portfolio with the work of Frank Lloyd Wright uh, with the four awards of uh, Henrik Peterson, Berlache, 1911. <coughs> but the next generation of architects uh, was a little bit disappointed with the rational wave of architecture by their teacher Jan Kotera and also by uh, Viennese uh, professor Otto Wagner. So, this group of artists and architects like Josef, like Josef Gochar, 
like Pavel Janák or Vlastislav Hoffman started the Czech cubist movement. They've been striving for new plasticity for using of uh, simple forms of prism and pyramid. And Janák has written at that time his famous article from modern architecture to architecture, striving from, uh, for abstraction instead of for function. And Josef Gochar has shocked the audience in Prague by his competition entry for the extension of Prague Town Hall uh, just between the Gothic Tower and Baroque Church by Dinsenhofer, he located his pyramid. It was 1909, the first uh, uh, moment of the Cubist movement, uh, which uh, has gone then um, till 1914 and later in a modified way in early 20s. Uh, through the connection to the, the sources of Cubism was not only a uh, painting of Picasso and Braque. You have just now in London a big show of Braque paintings and the attempt of Czech architects to transfer two-dimensional painting to three-dimensional architecture. Uh, but also they have been inspired by some theories of German philosophers and historians and aesthetics like uh, Wilhelm Woringen or Theodor Lipps, theory of empathy. And they established very soon contact to Berlin to uh, gallerist uh, Herwart Walden, who invited this Cubist group to exhibit a uh, Prague Cubist movement and in his gallery Der Sturm. And he included the exhibition of Prague Cubist group and of the Futurist group from Italy to his famous salon in the year 1913. And I am sure that Bruno Taut, uh, uh, Paul Sherbart, uh, Hans Scharun and the others have seen this uh, exposition. And one year later, uh, Czech uh, artists have founded Czech Werkbund, uh, like in Germany and in Austria. And uh, they wanted to be presented as an independent national group in Austrian pavilion. So finally, they have uh, received offer to, uh, to have four rooms in Austrian pavilion designed by contradictory way uh, by Moravian architect Josef Hoffmann. And Otakar Novotny designed these four rooms in Cubist manner. And there have been also exhibited all possible designs of Czech Cubist architects, artists, textile, and also exhibited models of these Cubist buildings in Prague. Uh, this also brought many interesting international connections to uh, Czech architects. Uh, Otakar Novotny met in Cologne, uh, for instance, uh, Henry van der Felde. And that way van der Felde came in the early 20s to lecture in Prague and had written a very interesting article in the journal La Cité about the situation in Prague, 1923. But of course, the break out of the First World War has, uh, has damaged uh, these connections. And during the war, Czech architects, like also maybe many English architects and many German architects, had only one chance to make sketches of tombs, of gravestones, and war memorials in their sketchbooks on the front of the First World War, like Pavel Janak did in his own sketchbook. But what has happened with these Cubist uh, prominent rebels from Prague? After the war was uh, founded the independent Czechoslovak state, and this architect, like Gochar or Janak, uh, they have been at the time approximately 40 years old, old, became immediately prominent uh, architects of the new regime. And they tried to found a new national style. So you can see now this metamorphosis of the Cubist architecture to sausage architecture, to national style, like in this uh, big insurance building by Pavel Janak. Similar building has uh, built also 
uh, Gochar. It was a short period of national style, such known Rondo Cubismus, which uh, composed uh, many prismatic elements and sausages on facades. And of course, these architects have been immediately attacked by the next generation of architects. They started their work at first after the First World War. And in this time between 1920 to 25, uh, you can find in, uh, in Czech Republic, or at that time in Czechoslovakia, maybe three main parallel groups of architects striving for functionalism. The first one was a group of students of Kotera in early 20s, like uh, Roschkot, like Bench, like Fuchs, or like Stepanek. They had, of course, to fight a hard battle with this sausage style of early 20s, for instance, here on frames of windows. But you can have a new feeling. Cubist architects have never uh, been interested in space. They've been interested in tension and expression on facades, on surfaces. It was just contradictory to the German experience, which was striving for architecture from inside to outside, for transparency in glass architecture of Paul Sherbart, and also for many uh, colors. And maybe these two examples uh, can explain this little shift in Czech architecture if in the next generation, when in this villa, designed by Stepanek and Fuchs, you can see really that they have been striving for architecture from inside to outside, and they've been also able to express the function on facades and the whole volume, like in this power plant, which was built by owner of this villa, also work of uh, Josef Stepanek and Bohusla Fuchs, 21 to 22. And you can also very easily recognize that they have known sketches by Erich Mendelssohn, then they have known Einstein Tower, and they have known also uh, some examples from the journal Freelicht by uh, Bruno Taud, whom they met at the Yerborg Company Congress in the year 23. So it was one group of architects. Uh, they had a journal Stavitel, and uh, they came then through a short period of the inspiration by Dutch architecture and came around 1925 to white functionalism. The second group, the group Devietzil, was this uh, poetical way of functionalism as Dalibor mentioned. And they had been the youngest, but they had two old patrons. One of them was Josef Hochol, one member of Cubist group, who has not followed the way of Gochar and Janak to sausage style and reduced, even in the year 1914, his vocabulary to, to very purist uh, expression. And uh, Walter Gropius has uh, published this sketch in his book, uh, The Internationale Architektur, in the first book in the Bauhaus series in Weimar as a result of the first international uh, exhibition of modern architecture in September 1923, where just this group was introduced to the international uh, architectural debate. The second elder patron of this group of young architects was Bedrich Feuerstein, who was deeply impressed by the revolutionary architecture of Boulet and Ledoux in France, and who traveled even before the First World War to St. Petersburg. And in early 20s, he worked a long time in the office of Auguste Perret in Paris, and he also established contacts to the office of Perret and to Le Corbusier, and that's very, very soon have been published uh, special issues of Czech journal Stavba uh, about this heroes of uh, Paris architectural uh, scene. Uh, he built 1921 the crematorium in Nimburg, uh, 
it's approximately 40 kilometers eastwards, eastwards from, uh, from Prague, one, uh, one building where you can uh, also recognize the influence of, uh, of French revolutionary architecture. He later moved also to Japan and worked for, uh, for uh, Raymond uh, and built together with Raymond the Soviet embassy in Tokyo. And these are now sketches by this young architect. They have at that time studied at the Czech Technical University and they have been very dissatisfied with the method, with the method of the learning because they had to, uh, to design uh, baths, uh, cultural houses and uh, rail stations in Corinthian or Ionic style. And on the back side sometimes they have done three sketches where you see once more this uh, hard battle between flatness and between sausages. Like here, Jaroslav Fragner, when he was 20 years old, it was 1921. And then, uh, in the same year, appeared in Prague the journal L'Esprit Nouveau. And the result is very clear that Corbusier has uh, dominated the situation. He was the center of the debate in Prague and the result was also a very uh, fast development of Czech modernism, as you see in these two sketches in the Pirelli building designed by Eugene Linhardt and in the Olympic department store, the very first modern, uh, modern entry, modern project by Jaromir Kreitzar for Prague, which was built a little bit uh, later. Kreitzar has translated Manifestos of Le Corbusier and published it in both languages in the journal Život Life, 1922, but it appeared at first in January 23, but it was a decisive moment uh, when Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia, Prague architects and Brno architects entered the international debate. And the third group of architects uh, has been a little elder. They have graduated at the Czech Technical University uh, before the First World War, and they developed the new functional styles through the development of new technology, uh, construction methods, etc., uh, like Olgi Phil or Ludwig Kisela, uh, leading architects of this third group, such now club of architects. Uh, Club of Architects published the journal Stavba and uh, Kisela built three first class uh, department stores in Bensasar Square like Batya Store, Alpha Arcade and Lind Store which is just beside Batya and Oldrich Till won a competition 1924 for the Prague Fair Palace and built it together with, uh, uh, with uh, his partner um, and when Le Corbusier arrived to Prague, he was completely shocked because of the huge scale of this building. Because at that time, he built only so small villas in Boulogne, Cote, and, and in, in, in the west end of Paris. And he could only dream about his uh, uh, big scale projects for United Nations and for uh, Central States. He used to say that it is quite interesting building, but it is not yet l'architecture, because he criticized here that on the, in the north facade, architect has not used strip windows, and that he used uh, normal staircases instead of to, uh, to uh, use ramps. The Club of Architects uh, has organized in winter 1924 to 25 the lecture series of prominent European architects in Prague and next day always in Brno. I have unfortunately not the first caricature, uh, caricature of the first speaker who was the Dutch architect Jacobus Oud. But the others you can see here uh, painted by, uh, uh, by Brno painter Jaroslav Klar. Uh, sh shortly before Christmas, 24, uh, arrived to Prague and Brno, Walter Gropius, who just closed the Bauhaus 
to open the new Bauhaus with the support of the Mayor of Dessau, Mr. Hesse, who allowed him to build his uh, fantastic uh, building uh, in, uh, in Dessau. Uh, he was the second speaker. The third speaker was Adolf Loos, and then came also Aux Enfants and Le Corbusier. Here is also a little notice uh, about the comment of, comment of Le Corbusier. He used to say, in Czechoslovakia, especially well-built girls. So it was maybe his main interest in uh, Prague in Brno, uh, because he saw the Czech architecture is too rational and too far from his Mediterranean and Cartesian uh, spirit. But anyway, his influence was very strong. As you can see in the next picture, the own house of Eugene Linhardt, which was built just after this visit and after this lecture series when functionalism uh, uh, finally won. And you can see then very rush development between 1925 to 30 to, to extremely interesting variety of uh, this style. Eugene Linhardt uh, traveled uh, to uh, Weissenhof, Siedlung in Stuttgart, and then to Paris to see the Villa Garche. And when he came back, he designed his own house with golden section methods used in the facade, with two levels connected by ramp in the living room, uh, with uh, fundamental colors uh, on walls, and of course with stoned chairs in the interior. The first Corbusian villa built in 1927. But uh, Corbusian influence was even more stronger, and uh, the whole nation, the whole generation uh, found very soon identity with this new spirit because they wanted to go away from Vienna and find the new identity in the new French culture. And we have now to answer the question, who was the client of these architects? In Germany, the client of uh, the German modern movement was mostly social democracy conducted by uh, Martin Wagner, Stadtbaurat of Berlin, who uh, conducted the whole program of uh, uh, Berlin uh, estates from the north, from Reinickendorf to the south, to Hufeisen Siedlung by Bruno Taut, and from the east uh, to the west to Siemensstadt and Spandau, Haselhorst. And in France, the client, Belgium, uh, client of Mallet de Vance or client of De Koning, it was a cultural elite. And client of Czechoslovak modernism of, and of Czech architecture especially was a, a young middle class, young bourgeoisie, who found this identity with the new style and has given directly commissions to these young architects. So that way our architects are sometimes 10 years younger as architects in Germany and in other countries, in exception with Italy where Ferrani was extremely young. So architects like Havlicek and Honzik could win competitions uh, when they haven't been yet 30 years old and they got commissioned to build gener General uh, Pension Institute in Prague, very famous in Britain through uh, Frederick York, who published this building here in England, and he also shortly worked in the office uh, of Havlicek and Honzik, or Adolf Bench, who won 1926 competition for the office building of Prague Electricity Board. Uh, at the time he was 32, and he built this very elegant, modern building on the Kai of the Vertava River. And this movement uh, was not isolated phenomenon only in Prague, but spread out to the whole countries. So also in small cities, like in Colin, uh, 60 kilometers eastwards uh, from Prague, where Franz Kafka has spent very often his summer frische, his uh, holidays with his, uh, uh, with his uh, uh, relatives. Uh, uh, you can find, uh, for instance, electricity power plant 
uh, designed by uh, Jaroslav Fragder when he was just 30 years old and he uh, got, uh, after he uh, executed this building, nicknamed Czech Gropius because of proportions of this building which have been so similar to Bauhaus and also because the photographer of these photographs was a pupil of Bauhaus from uh, Weimar, Inzich Koch. Uh, three years later, 1932, uh, Fragner built a, a sale house with the apartment of the owner in the same city, sale house of Tatra cars. And it is a very typical example in Czechoslovakia, which you couldn't find in Berlin, for instance, or, or very rare, rarely in Germany. Combination of small business, sale house, or office of a lawyer uh, connected with an apartment, but you can find it in Czechoslovakia uh, very often. And also it's uh, another interesting thing, detail here. It's somehow transformation of the principles of the house on Pilotis by Le Corbusier for a uh, different climate. So it is really house on Pilotis with a maisonette inside and the Pilotis are covered by glass walls. <coughs> During uh, uh, early 20s was developed very soon the second important center of the modern movement in Czechoslovakia in Brno, capital of Moravia. Brno was uh, known in 19th century as uh, Austrian Manchester or as a suburb of Vienna because Brno is very close by their mentality and distance from the uh, imperial capital of the Habsburg monarchy. And President Masaryk, uh, founder of uh, uh, Czechoslovakia, who uh, spent a few years here in London as a professor of the Institute of Slavonic Studies, maybe uh, half a mile away from here, he wanted to evade a concurrence to Prague, so he located to Brno some very important uh, institutes like Second University, like International Fair, and also as the highest supreme court he located to Brno. And it was a chance for young architects trained in Prague or in Vienna to move to Brno and to use this chance and to build this building. And so you can find in, in Brno very interesting polarity between architects trained in Prague and oriented to the western avant-garde of Rotterdam and of Paris and of the uh, modern traditionalism inspired by Adolf Loh's uh, activity in Vienna. You have here this uh, contrary poles of this priority on these two pictures. On one side, the uh, funeral chapel at the city cemetery by Bohuslav Fuchs, who moved to Brno from Prague and the same cemetery crematorium building by uh, Ernst Wiesner who was trained in Vienna and he was admirer of laws. Both buildings designed in the same year, one uh, in the spirit of modern traditionalism and second one of course inspired by Dutch architects but also by the Unity Temple by Frank Lloyd Wright in Oak Park in Chicago. In the second half of the 20s, you could observe also first executed buildings by young graduate architects from the Brno School of Architecture, like Josef uh, Kranz, who was probably most gifted of them, of the first generation of architects trained in the Brno School. And he built his first building, Cafe Era, and second building, Cinema Avia, between 1927 to uh, 28. And this is an example of a building which played more role in an international debate as uh, at home uh, because of a few facts. Uh, Philip Johnson traveled to Brno 1930 in the summertime to visit one special villa. And by the way, he passed this building, has taken photograph and published this photograph in his book uh, written together with Henry Russell Hitchcock, uh, the international style architecture since 1922. 
So uh, the Cafe Era was uh, more published abroad as here. Later in the 60s, uh, it was, I think, AD, uh, which brought Era again uh, in one issue dedicated to 20s. And finally, Danny Sharp has uh, included it in his uh, picture history of uh, world architecture. In 1925, uh, uh, was appointed a new professor of architecture in Brno, uh, uh, Jerzy Kroha, who was famous through his uh, expressionist buildings in Mladá Boleslav, and he was also interested in the solution of the problem of uh, housing for existence minimum. Uh, he built for himself a very luxury villa, which hosted sometimes Czech avant-garde for Czech uh, alternation of barns, nights, as you see here. Uh, this is a very famous Czech poet, uh, later surrealistic poet, uh, uh, the, the period which uh, Dalibor mentioned, Vítězslav Nezval. Here is a sinking Bauhaus table. This is Karel Taige, the leading theorist of Prague, avant-garde and later of surrealism. And this gentleman who is serving Slivovitz is Mr. Roman uh, Jakobson, the Russian emigre, who was at that time professor of the Brno University and later professor of structuralist aesthetics at the Harvard University. So it was this hard life of Czech leftists in the early 30s. They couldn't imagine what will come in golden 50s. Uh, uh, Vítězslav Nezval was national hero uh, Roman Jakobson was on Harvard, and uh, uh, Taige died after he was uh, hunted. It was a really a real hunting on his person in early 50s. And architect of this uh, garden, Izzy Krova, was one of most prominent collaborators of Stalinist regime. So it was a, a little bit distribution of roles of people after a few decades. But the most important architect in Brno was Bohuslav Fuchs, who was since 1925 to 29 a city architect. And after he worked in his own office, he got a lot of commission from the city, but also privately. And he built a lot of many, uh, many interesting buildings, like Hotel Avion in the historical center of Brno. Uh, the building side is only 8 meter, 35 centimeter bright, and 34 meter deep. Uh, but he uh, was able to design quite interesting spatial solution inside, where you could see from the fourth gallery, from the fourth level, through the whole body of the cafeteria to the main entrance. Quite interesting spatial uh, uh, work, which was uh, published uh, first time in the Berlin journal Die Form, together with the Breslau Werkbundsiedlung and with building of Hans Scharun and Adolf Rading. Another building designed by Wosla Fuchs is uh, the Vesna School for Women Professionals. Uh, combined, connected with the girls' home, and uh, built 1929 to 30. And maybe this is a first example where not Czech architects have been inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright or by Gropius, but opposite way, one very famous uh, avant-garde architect was impressed by this building and transformed one idea of this house in his uh, uh, very famous work. Uh, I found in files of the collection of Giuseppe Terrani a small extract from German newspaper where was photograph of this girl's home and of this grid of loggias which inspired uh, Giuseppe Terrani uh, three years later when he designed his famous Casa del Fascio uh, in Como, and when he developed this system to two walls, uh, creating the main facade in front of the Duomo of the Cathedral of Como.
the other facade of the same school. We have to run a little, otherwise you will sleep very soon and uh, it has no reason uh, to, to do two long lectures. 1928 was uh, open the Brno Fair at the occasion of 10th anniversary of Czechoslovak Republic. The master plan has designed the Dean of Brno School of Architecture, uh, Emil Králík, and along these two axes have built famous Brno or Prague architects pavilions, like Boleslav Fuchs, pavilion of the city of Brno, with an interesting spiral stairway. And in the center was the main pavilion of industry, designed by Prague architect Josef Halovs and by engineer uh, uh, Jaroslav Valenta, which is quite courageous paraboloic uh, steel concrete uh, construction. As a point de vue was built exhibition tower, one glass tower by Bohumir Cermak, and photograph of this tower used Bruno Taut for the cover of his uh, book, uh, The New Architecture in Europe and in America, which he published in German language in Julius Hoffmann Publisher House in Stuttgart, and at the same time English as a special issue of studio. So you see at the time we had no iron curtain, but uh, Czechoslovakia was a natural part of the international discussion. Uh, in the occasion of the opening of Brno Fair was built also the first uh, Czechoslovak Werkbund estate in Brno. It was a private acting ac action of two Brno building entrepreneurs who invited uh, uh, nine uh, architects, uh, uh, eight from Brno and one Mr. Stepanek from Prague, and they built double houses, triple houses, and uh, solitaire houses. This is a Kroha house. But the result was an economic disaster, bankrupt of the firm, because they could sell only double house designed by Ernst Wiesner, and they could rent this double house uh, for Brno Scouting Club because uh, uh, maybe, maybe plans have been not so well, uh, well linked to, to wishes to, uh, of, of clients. I will show you the problem of the double house, which was designed by students of Brno School of Architecture, put 914, they have been 22 and 24 years old. And they have designed uh, one uh, uh, variation on the double house of Le Corbusier on small, in smaller scale. One of them, Putna, has uh, designed very clear, uh, elegant plan which has uh, uh, allowed many divisions of uh, living uh, level and bedroom uh, floor. Uh, but his, uh, his companion, his partner, uh, Faultin, has tried to, to develop a small maisonette. But he had some problems. He had to add another staircase to, to reach the bathroom. And also in the section you see his problems with bedrooms, that this niche is only, sleeping niche is only 135 centimeters high. So it was a reason why this uh, house was uh, uh, strongly criticized in newspapers at that time. So after this uh, result in Brno, the Prague uh, Werkbund Estates has the Werkbund uh, has decided to organize the Prague Werkbund Estate by different way. Uh, Prague architects have founded an uh, uh, association of friends of Czech Koslovak Werkbund, uh, possible clients. They could uh, choose architects, members of the Werkbund, and build with them house on their own, own account. So was built only one estate where have been executed houses not as manifestos, but based on the normal dialogue between architect and client. But because of this, have been, uh, due of this fact, have been cancelled all uh, attempts to build standardized houses or row houses or tenement houses, especially in the rough row, and have been built only solitaire villas with studio, uh, without studio, or villas with two flats. I will show you only three houses of this estate. 
uh, all of them has designed the most uh, successful architect of this exhibition, Ladislav Jacques. The first one he designed for the director of the Museum of Decorative Arts, Dr. Herein, with a longitudinal living room and upstairs bedrooms uh, and a terrace with a view to the castle. You see that the location is very similar to Weissenhof. It's a south slope uh, with a fantastic view, not to Bonatz rail station, but to the hero of Prague. The second house by Jacques was house for a professor of geometry. It's very important for architects. And you can see this uh, very strong orientation to the south and very narrow passage from where you have uh, access to bedrooms and north facade is only one small bullet window for the staircase. And the third house, uh, Jacques uh, regarded as a possible standardized unit for Maison d'Habitation. He uh, visited with his teacher, Joseph Gochar, the exposition of decorative arts in Paris, 1925, where was exhibited one unit of unité d'habitation as a pavilion l'esprit nouveau. And he had also dreamed to build once uh, big unité d'habitation composed of these units. And here is this unit. Downstairs longitudinal living room with two levels and covered terrace and upstairs cabin-like bedrooms consequently used in this program, an open terrace framed as a one unified uh, body. Very interesting example. And Jacques also designed many interiors, not only of his houses, but also of houses designed by other architects, like the only one foreign architect, Matt Stamm, or by all six studies. This is the third house furnished by uh, Jacques, who used, of course, tonnet chairs steel uh, furniture and interesting lamps designed by Prague firm Prokop. So it was a high standard of Czech industrial design. So it was not only romantic, uh, uh, artistic feeling of Czech architects, but also romantic engineering, uh, which uh, has existed at the time. And the family house became immediately uh, field where you could find all nuances of the international style. And Jacques became star of these projects of uh, villas for uh, middle class. Uh, and he built, after the Werkmund estate, three houses. One for uh, aircraft uh, designer. This is this house where he really succeeded to express the profession of the owner. Then the house for a film director and finally, house for one Czech actress. I will show you only these two first houses because this actress later became mistress of Gables. So I will not mention the third one. As you see the, uh, the house for aircraft designer, it is extended version of the third house from, uh, from the Prague Wreckbund estate, longitudinal living room, then a glassed tunnel as a winter garden uh, going to, to the uh, uh, terrace downstairs and upstairs once again cabin-like bedrooms and studio of the aircraft designer. This house was uh, very famous in England because Frederick York has published it in his book, The New, The Modern House, uh, Architectural Press, 1934 like also the house by Linhardt, which I have shown before. And this is a daily life of the family. Mr. Hein is observing his aircraft in the air because the airport was only two miles away, and his wife is using the terrace. Now, very quickly, a few houses which uh, express this variety of style in one typological task house designed by Jacques for the film director Martin Fritsch in the south slope of, uh, of Hotkovichki of the southern part of Prague. 
with the living room upstairs and terrace upstairs and downstairs bedroom, built 1934 to uh, 35. And as I mentioned, the small villa became an uh, experimental field of this architecture. We will show you now a few examples. One very strict rational solution by Mr. and Mrs. Eller in Prague. A steel skeleton with uh, very strong proportions, like uh, the work of brothers Luckhardt in Berlin Ruppenhorn or Berlin Dahlem, or a little bit more uh, uh, more uh, uh, soft solution uh, by my father, a villa for one entrepreneur in Olomouc, Olmitz, 1936. But uh, a very important part of this movement was also this uh, very high quality of engineering and of industrial design. I would like to explain it on these two uh, examples. This is a famous Tatra uh, 77 car designed 1934 and exhibited first time at the Berlin Auto Salon 1936. And it was a sensation of streamlined uh, and similar wave you can see also in our engines, diesel engines like here. This is a famous express Slovak Blitz, which has operated between Prague and Bratislava and Prague and Ostrava. Uh, this was designed by architect Vladimir Greger, one romantic architect who was a very close friend of the father of President Havel and built for the father of Havel uh, several houses uh, in Barandov Hill uh, in the south of Prague. And he designed also this, uh, uh, this engine. And later, uh, because he uh, has taken part uh, in the resistance, he was killed uh, at, uh, at Pletzensee in Berlin. Uh, but this industrial streamlined architecture has also impressed architects. I have uh, brought a few pictures of the work of my father, who is laying here. He's 25 years old, and the house was built for a veterinary uh, physician, for vet uh, on the Syrian border. You can see the hard battle between two heroes of my father, between Le Corbusier in the north facade and between his uh, own teacher, Hans Sharoun, in the south facade. And uh, if you will study the plan, you can see that the north facade uh, has, uh, uh, was designed like a spine, and from that spine was opened arms to the sunshine. It was 1933 to 34. Uh, one year later, my father worked with Sharon again, and the result was a villa in Berlin when he came back, in, in Ostrava, in Moravia, a villa on the south slope. Uh, with a landscaped uh, living room, which is 13 meter uh, wide, with a fantastic view on the volley of the river and industrial city. And the other part, uh, the private part of the villa, is oriented to private uh, garden above. Uh, <coughs> the interior uh, looked like in this picture, and this is a street facade. And you can see also this uh, little shift in the modern movement from white functionalism to uh, using of natural materials, which you could at first observe in Le Corbusier Villa in Medoc near Bordeaux, and also in the work of Sharon after, after uh, uh, the year 1933. At the same time as uh, the middle class and upper middle class moved to such villas, Karel Taige dreamed about the solution of the uh, housing for existence minimum. He founded the Czechoslovak Siam Group and engaged these uh, architects to design koldoms, which have been very influenced by Soviet koldoms by Ginzburg and others. So with a separate life of parents and children. And also it was forbidden to stay longer with one wife in these koldoms. Uh, and these architects have, uh, have uh, 
use these uh, entries in competitions for low-cost housing in Prague in uh, early 30s. And some of them, as this one, have been published in Siam Congress in Brussels, where Taige was co-editor of the uh, Siam uh, conference book. Interesting is that the best solution of small unit has designed, again, Ladislav Jacques, architect of this middle class villas for aircraft designer and of the Prague uh, Werkbund uh, state unit for one person and for two persons. But city of Brno and city of Prague has built uh, low cost housing uh, with uh, normal family flats with 40 square meters with one living room with a small, uh, small shower and kitchenette and with uh, bedrooms. Uh, very soon was uh, developed in the second half of the 20s the third center of modern architecture in Zlin, city where uh, was uh, Bata shoe manufacture. Bata used to say that we have to work together and to live separately in small houses like in English garden cities. And he developed a unified system of steel concrete skeleton constructions with a module 20 feet. And in this system are built all public and industrial buildings in Zlin, like also these two buildings designed by uh, their architect Vladimir Karfik, uh, the hotel, 1931-32, and the headquarter of the company with quite interesting detail with the uh, uh, studio of the boss in an elevator so the boss Batya could stop in each floor and observe of his collaborators are reading newspapers or if they are really working for the company. 1935, Batya has invited uh, Le Corbusier as a judge for the international housing competition. And maybe this is a good time for a little break. I will show you now the second earliest movie with Le Corbusier from that visit, which uh, will take only two minutes and 53 seconds. So please film now. It was uh, in April, uh, 26 April 1935. You will see that Le Corbusier is very nervous and Czech architects are very peaceful. They cannot expect any commission by Batya, so they are interested only in classical Czech food. This is Le Corbusier, city architect Gahura who is architect of the master plan of Zlin, and Professor Shen from Croatia, from uh, Zagreb. Pavel Janak, the famous cubist architect. And now Vladimir Karfik architect of the hotel and of the headquarter, and Bohuslav Fuchs. Now is uh, served a special Czech dish, uh, pork, kraut, and dumplings. Bon appétit. Le Corbusier prefers to smoke cigarette because he is expecting uh, arrival of uh, Jan Batya. And now he will be satisfied with the onion soup. Bohuslav Fuchs. And Batya arrived. And mayor of the city of Zlin, Dr. Cipera. This is a symbol of Czechoslovak French friendship. <laughs> now they are on the top terrace observing the industrial area of Zlin and south slopes where Corbusier wanted to locate it, to locate his uh, maison d'habitation system.
Karfik, Le Corbusier, Mayor of the City, and Jan Batya. And in the background, you can see this uh, garden city system of uh, Zlin housing. will take 20 seconds more. Okay, thank you. Uh, have you enough or would like to, to hear something more? Or give you me 10 minutes or 9 minutes? And, or should we finish now? Would you like to continue? Five minutes. So I will go very, very quickly now. Please, slides. Next, please. Uh, uh, this is the project of uh, Le Corbusier for Batia with these uh, complexes of Maison d'Habitation. Batia refused to build it. Uh, and then he designed also standardized department stores for Batia in France. Uh, the result was that Carfic built one year later, very similar concept of uh, department store in Amsterdam. And at the time, as I have mentioned, we have been not behind Iron Curtain in Zoological Gardens, so this is Vladimir Karpik in no smoking office of Frank Lloyd Wright in Arizona. And some, uh, some other Czech architects in different situations. Vladimir, uh, uh, Jaroslav Fragner visiting serialist painter uh, Shima in Paris. And this is uh, Hans Sharun with his client uh, Felix Bench and my father in Berlin, 1936. Uh, many Czech architects studied at Bauhaus. Uh, Hannes Meyer had uh, many links to Prague and Brno. And uh, interesting are also buildings by foreign architects in Prague. I will uh, say only names of architects. Bruno Paul, villa in Prague. In Paul's office walked Mies. And this is a villa designed by a pupil of Van der Felde, Tilo Schoder, and Liberec in northern Bohemia. Uh, uh, 26, 27, 23. 26, Peter Behrens, competition entry from B for Brno Hotel, and the same competition by Jacobus Oud. Wiesner built then the commission. Erich Mendelssohn's last building be before he moved from Berlin to uh, London and Bex Hill, he built a department store in Ostrava, 1932, and Mart Stamm was only one foreigner who realized a villa at the Baba Werkbund estate. Uh, villas designed by Lauterbach are known from the book uh, The Modern House by Frederick Roig. Uh, Frederick Roig, they are both uh, 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 located in northern Bohemia, Villa Hasek, Villa Schmelowski, uh, steamer architecture. And the uh, biggest commissions has got, of course, Plechnik, who rebuilt the castle for President Masaryk. At the time, we had a president who could read books and write books. And then we had not such presidents 50 years. Now we have, again, such president. Uh, the uh, Sacre Coeur Church by Plechnik, and finally two houses for existence maximum because I've shown you houses of existence minimum. So one house for existence maximum is Villa Miller in Prague, uh, where Ross decided to celebrate his 60th birthday together with Karl Kraus, with the client, Mr. Miller, and uh, Mrs. Miller. This is uh, third wife of Ross, and this is Mr. Markelos who translated Laws uh, articles in Czech language. In the interior, you can see many interesting details. For instance, the boudoir of the lady is located in the same level as the gentleman's library. But the gentleman would like to visit the lady. He can go a few steps up and down, but the lady can disappear because she has own staircase. But it was very good for social games. That's why they celebrated 
first day there. This is a second uh, house for existence maximum in Brno, designed by Ludwig Miss van der Rohe. But maybe you have never seen clients. This is Margaret Tugendhat and Fritz Tugendhat. And this is the house today with very bad replicas of uh, Brno and Barcelona chairs. Unfortunately, they have been uh, removed as soon as possible. And now very quickly, only some typological examples of high standard of Czech architecture. French schools by Gillard, 1931, a hospital building, 1935, arcades in the center of Prague with uh, glass brick vault, black rose arcade, 1930, Werkbund arcade, 1936. And of course, apartment houses by famous uh, London architect Eugen Rosenberg, who was trained in Prague and later in the office of Le Corbusier, and who introduced in Prague this type of luxury apartments with strip window, loggia, and winter garden uh, before he moved to Australia, to England, and became partner of York, Rosenberg, and Mandal office. One not executed project of a uh, sacral uh, architecture of the church from the year 1929, designed by Josef Stepanek 30 years before Alvar Alto executed his uh, famous church in Vuoksenyska in western, in eastern Finland. And at the end, three names, because I can imagine this Slavic name, it's uh, for you completely unknown word. Uh, for me, most important architects. One of them was Boslav Fuchs, man of action. When he received commission, he built a house, like his own villa in Brno, 1928, with a maisonette system, with a gallery and library. Later, he uh, developed a very special organic architecture in his thermal spa uh, green frock in Trenčanske Teplice in Slovakia, designed 1936 to 37. After the war, he was leading professor of the Brno School. In 58, he was kicked out by communists. The second name, Jaromir Kreitzar, who was later teacher of the AA, with his first wife, Milena, former mistress of uh, Franz Kafka. Uh, he was a leading personality who translated Le Corbusier, uh, manifestos and who built this uh, building where he lived in penthouse and had his atelier. This is a small detail of the holiday excursion with his wife. Uh, uh, and this is his best building, uh, the sanatorium Machnach, published uh, in England also, built 31, 32, and 33, he moved to Soviet Union and walked this, this is also the sanatorium from the other side. He worked with Ginzburg, but when came Stalinist command to build historical styles, he emigrated back to Czechoslovakia and won competition for the Czechoslovak pavilion at the World Exhibition in Paris, 37, and built uh, this first manifesto of high tech 30 years before Archigram and 40 years before Raffinery Pompidou. He emigrated then 48 to England and was teacher here at the AA and he died in London. Obituaries have been published only in, uh, in England. So it was one man of action, Fuchs, uh, one enfant terrible, Jaromir Kreitzar, and the third name is Kamil yeah, uh, Roschkot, Plato, philosopher of Czech modernism, who was interested in eternal task of architecture like gravestone, or Pavilion, Century of Progress exhibition, Chicago, 1933. He built gravestones of Czech sarcophagus of Czech kings in the crypt of Prague Cathedral. In the center is the Charles IV, the emperor, and besides of him, some other kings, and also in one case, four queens in one sarcophagi, quite unusual uh, program. <coughs> this is the crypt of Prague Cathedral, and he also uh, built one fantastic theater uh, where he once again evoked monumentality even in modern style. And finally, he built also gravestone of the whole movement, and he executed 
Czechoslovak pavilion uh, at the World Exposition in New York, 1939, at the moment when, after the appeasement politics of Neville Chairman, uh, Czechoslovakia disappeared from the map, and he built this monumental architecture without any windows, but with a quotation of the Czech philosopher Comenius, which could serve as a last sentence. Thank you very much for your patience and for your coming. <laughs> Too long. Your two seconds have been too short, Dalibor. No, no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, housing uh, was a very important part of modernism, but I could do also lecture only with public buildings in the center of Prague and center of Brno. Uh, I thought it's interesting because we have uh, these famous examples of, uh, of uh, York buildings, of Patrick Quinn buildings here around London. Uh, so I thought that it is maybe interesting for English audience to show, uh, show small villas. Uh, but uh, thank you for this uh, advice. <laughs> I will show next time more public buildings <laughs> with more sections. <laughs> but I wanted to, sh to show you the development of the style and also uh, express uh, who was the client. It was, it was this middle class who lived in these small villas. And it's a difference between Czechoslovakia and the other country. Silencium. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>